Hey folks, this is an excerpt from Discovering People, a podcast about lives and stories. It's a conversation series about the question, how did we get here? Each episode is a deep portrait of a different person's worldviews and biography. I want this podcast to inspire empathy and understanding. I hope that by encountering strangers in this way, you can discover insights and perspectives for your own life, one episode at a time. In this episode, I talk to Mariam, who is a service provider in the horror industry. The link to the full episode is in the description. Um, okay, so let me just open up the horror segment by saying I love horror, I live horror, um, and maybe talk about how I got to got to horror in the first place. Because although as a child I was super into creepy stuff, like creepy stories, more of the supernatural and, and unexplainable kind. I think a lot of young people are. I completely avoided horror films until I was 17. Okay. Um, and the reason for that being I get occasional sleep paralysis episodes. Uh, and so although I'm a lucid dreamer and I'm, and I'm in control of my dream and always aware that I'm dreaming when I dream dream, sleep paralysis is a different story because even if you don't um even if there's there's nothing even if nothing scary appears if you open your eyes and someone's standing in your room in the middle of the night you're gonna freak out um and that would be a tamer version i've it started when i was 13 and a lot of these episodes were Wait, terrifying so, but so you open yes. your eyes so sleep paralysis means you're like you open your eyes and then you you're still dreaming or like so yeah so there are different there are different forms of it basically when we are sleeping we are paralyzed um right. because it would hurt us if we started flailing in our sleep all the time mm. it makes sense biologically um but the REM phase um when we're going through that rapid eye movement and we're dreaming um what happens during sleep paralysis is that you sort of wake up but the REM continues Uh, and for a lot of people, it's visual. I think that is, uh, you know, what's the main issue. But for some people, it's auditory. Uh, and for very few people, it's touch as well. Um, so you are awake and you are aware of your surroundings, but your brain keeps dreaming. <laughs> oh, uh, and, uh, with okay, yeah. me, and, and to be fair, I'm not 100% sure if what I have is sleep paralysis because when it happens, I'm not paralyzed, but I wake up and I'm in whatever space I'm in and then there's something going on. And uh, sometimes the, the imagery is quite normal, but sometimes mine were super terrifying. I think for most people, it's generally a terrifying experience, but you know, depending on what you see can be more or less terrifying. Mm. And, um, can and you? yeah, but that's a thing in itself. I was going to say, uh, if it, you get to this point where you conclude, if my brain can conjure up this kind of thing, then a medium, a film that is meant to scare me is probably going to be a million times <laughs> yeah. worse. And when I then saw my, my first real horror film, Uh, because I finally mustered up the strength. Uh, it was the grudge. And I realized, you know, as scary as it was, I appreciated, appreciated it as an art form. And it wasn't, it was nothing compared to my, my sleep paralysis. It was actually not that bad. And I thought, well, this was fine. Because I'm <laughs> guessing it's not as visceral, right? I mean, you're still, it's a, it's a screen and you're sitting in front of it. Yeah, and it's and even even the, with the screen, if you compare film to video games, for example, right. like That's I can much more binge watch. Media. Yeah, I can binge watch films, but you make me play Outlast. Like I, I still don't understand how I played part one, but like part two, I couldn't because it physically stressed me out so <laughs> much. So, but but part two wasn't as good either. It was. It, it had a different. Uh, yeah. goal I think it mind it was more the even more of the shock value and less of the naked twins with penis and <laughs> um, which oh, I missed those guys, oh, man. Those guys oh my god yeah. but, uh, but no it was um, you know I, I can watch someone play it again the moment that it's physical and I have to be responsible for my own fate. That's when I start getting scared because I don't trust I can take right. that responsibility. Uh, but the thing is with sleep paralysis, it's it usually, I can't even tell you how long it lasts. I mean, sometimes it's longer, but it's probably in most cases just a few seconds and it feels like forever. 
And those few seconds um, are just enough to scare you silly. But, you know, so that was why I, I didn't imagine. get into it for a yeah. really long time. <laughs> when you mentioned that um, phenomenon, a couple of things popped into my mind, a couple of questions or also an association. Um, I, it reminded me of, but that's, I think that's something different in, in its nature, but it reminded me of that character from um, The Haunting of Hill House. Like the girl who, who wakes up and who's she's frozen the to the bed. Lady. Yeah, she sees the bent neck lady, but also she uh, she wakes up and she's frozen in her bed, right? She can't move. And then so her, her, showing, her husband helps her. Yeah, what they're showing in that is basically a variation of what sleep paralysis looks like. Okay. I mean, in that, they're fictionally saying the ghosts are real. And yeah. trust to there are people out there who say what you're seeing Uh, there, there are documentaries and there, there are Reddit conversations and there are articles. And some people do believe there's a sim supernatural component to it, especially because if you, if you really study sleep paralysis, I mean, it goes back to the old hag where you have like, like an elderly woman or like a demon kind of thing that like sits, sits on your chest and stops you from breathing. Right, yeah. And a lot of people see, uh, and this is in a dig in your direction, but a guy with a hat, <laughs> uh, that seems to be <laughs> a what reoccurring is. character. It is what it is. Yeah. So a lot of people who have nothing to do with each other have reported very similar, uh, characters um appearing in their episodes so some people out there are convinced that there is a supernatural component to it gotcha um but uh as much as i am drawn to the theme of all that supernatural unless i have hardcore evidence right that uh, that it, this is a real person it's all a figment of my imagination and i think the more you dig into the science the more terrifying it gets because you realize it's your own body creating these things um, as opposed to, you know, some ghost that just popped in and can't touch you because it's just a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wondered about that. Um, if, you know, if you know somebody or if you listen to somebody talking about these kinds of experiences, right, where they say, because there's enough people in the world who say, no, that's like you said, that there, there has to be something supernatural going on here. I have some sort of thick sense or something that allows me to communicate with beings from the other side of the veil, you know, and um, I'm always like, first of all, who am I to say that's not true? Because just because I don't, I don't experience it, you know, uh, doesn't mean it's not true. Also, I think if the person experiences it, that makes it true for them, doesn't it? Mm, yeah. And, you know, well, of course... You know, so I'm, I'm not gonna, like, I, I think that they believe it's true. I believe that, you know? So, and I can't um, judge any further. I don't judge, but I do freaking love real life spooky stories. And oh, yeah. there are some, oh, yeah. there are some videos that, um, that I put together as a compilation on the YouTube channel for Grimfest TV mm -hmm. uh, and the compilation videos. And, and maybe you can like edit it in Grimfest TV YouTube channel. I don't know. Just right. put it on the camera. But, <laughs> um, but to promote uh, the release of our format that went on yesterday and I will promote later, I put together compilation videos of people I had been interviewing for our format. And um, it was all, I, I added these questions to the end of our interviews And I asked them to tell me real life spooky stories, things that either they had personally experienced or a friend of theirs experienced. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got stories of my own. I put one in the compilation because I assume this is going to be an annual Halloween special. Um, but one of the filmmakers, Pete Tomkeys, he was telling a story. Uh, and I hope your listeners love this because I'm all about these stories. But he was telling a story and it's in the compilation video of how when he was a kid, he was sitting in a car and it was a road trip with his family and they had just visited uh, their his grandmother. And in front of them was a bus full of people. And, uh, and he looked to the side when he was in the car and he saw a cemetery. And when he looked at the cemetery, he saw a woman in white just floating over the cemetery. And whilst he was watching this as a child, He asked everyone in the car, do you guys see this? Like, does, 
look at the woman. She, it looks like she's floating. It's so weird. And no one in the car uh, saw what he saw. It was only <laughs> him. And then two weeks later, he got an, uh, or his family got a letter, an envelope from his grandmother. And she had cut something out of the newspaper. And what happened was a woman on the bus saw the exact same thing, no but way. no one else on the bus saw it. So she wrote an article to the newspaper and asked if anyone else had seen what she saw because she thought she was going nuts. And the grandmother saw it knowing what the grandson had seen in the car, cut out the newspaper clipping and sent it to them. Holy shit. So two people who had no contact to each other simultaneously saw this woman floating I, I, over I'm guessing, the cemetery. I'm guessing he, 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 he still has that article, right? I, I have no clipping. idea. He was really tiny. Uh, and and oh, yeah, right. he's a collector so he, of things. He, he might have it. Um, mm -hmm. He might still have the newspaper clipping. But, but it's one of those things where, uh, and I absolutely believe that this happened. Now, does that mean it's a ghost with awareness and consciousness and yada yada? Or is it like the echo of someone's energy? Or what is the theory you believe in? But the fact of the matter is, that is what one would classify as a ghost. And two people who had zero contact to each other uh, saw the same thing whilst their environments didn't. And it became, and it went into a newspaper and was cut out of the clipping to like keep the memory. And it was like, what That's the crazy, hell? Man. That's <laughs> crazy. Wow. So when you've but heard I, like I tons that... of stories like that, you're like, yeah. okay, well, there's something, you know, I don't know if supernatural is even the term. Yeah, it's natural. And then it technically, even if it was science, it's supernatural. So I guess something's going on. But do I think that a ghost is going to try to like possess me or whatever? I don't know. Mm. But I do love these stories. And I do believe that a lot of people who tell them um, they did genuinely experience it the way the way they did. And that's exactly it. Yeah, that's but what I'm thinking as well. Videos if you want more ghost uh, stories. <laughs> I find it tr super fascinating that you are interviewing people for your program and that you're asking them that question because these are really interesting stories to collect and I believe a lot of people have them. I have one um, actually in my Do you share? I want to hear it. Yeah. Um, now it's that you not, brought it up. It's not that supernatural, but I, I did write it down right after, like the same day I, I wrote it. I think I have it on my computer somewhere. Um, and let me see how much of it I remember, because if I read the um, my notes now, I would probably remember more. Um, but it was sort of, I was waking up in the morning and I was lying in bed and I was awake and I was completely like lucid. But I felt like for a while there, for just a few minutes, it felt like my mind was sharper and more awake than normal. Like there was some some extended clarity to my mind. And I was imagining, I was closing my eyes and I was imagining being on a bicycle and riding down a cobblestone street in my hometown. And my entire body felt the whole experience, like the, 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 the feeling of being on the bicycle and like um, the, the vibrations from the cobblestones. And then out of some, out of left field came my dad's voice. And I don't remember if he was saying something coherent or if it's just words i'm not sure but i heard it so clearly like it was just like i was surrounded by it like it was just there and it was like ultra high res <laughs> well that just, sounds like a lucid dream it's sort of in a way but it's, it's when you're is... aware that you're dreaming and it becomes so real that it's like it's actually that is happening. super real yeah always, that is like you know that you're in that situation that's a lucid dream i guess then that's what it was it yeah it, it could have been that um it, it did feel like more real than reality in a way like there was some sort of elevated reality kind of thing to it mm. even though i knew i was i was uh, I was aware that it wasn't real in that way, you know, it wasn't, I was lying in my bed, it was in Montreal, um, but it, it was just like the, the kind of, ex the, the experience, the auditory experience, the sensory experience was sort of amplified, it wasn't just real, but it was amplified real. <laughs>